In today's Q&A, anti-aging benefits of intermittent fasting and does it really matter how you break your fast? There are three main components to intermittent fasting calories, autophagy, and circadian hormonal rhythms. So if you want to pull the maximum amount of health benefits from your fasting, you should know about all of them. I personally only recently started to pay close attention to that third component, hormones, and oh boy, it made such a difference, which I can feel and measure. So let's talk about it. But first, let's get the terminology right. In the scientific literature, intermittent fasting, IF, means having a drastic calorie reduction for a day or more. And that's important. The initial studies by Mark Madsen, which has started all this craze, for example, were five two fasting protocols, two days with the restricted calories. But in pop and blog culture, intermittent fasting has spread to everything, including protocols like eating only for 12 hours a day and not eating for the rest. 12, 12 or most popular 8 to 16 or even as extreme as one meal a day but you see it's not called intermittent fasting in the literature the official name for this single day variation is time restricted eating you restrict the time when you eat and it's important because when we let's say open new england journal of medicine and look at the effects of intermittent fasting on aging and disease and read the following Many studies have indicated that several of the benefits of intermittent fasting are dissociated from its effects on weight loss. These benefits include improvement in glucose regulation, blood pressure, heart rate, etc. It doesn't really apply to the time-restricted eating. Oops. But does it mean that time-restricted eating has no benefits? And as the title of this video suggests, it has. But you have to be a little more careful. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to say intermittent fasting because that's what we all used to. But what I'm really going to mean is time-restricted eating, okay? <laughs> all by itself, intermittent fasting is not magical. Most of the benefits come from the reduction of the total calories. It just happens to work better for some people who cannot count calories or eat small portions. So it's just a tool. And if you look again at the New England Journal of Medicine, one year long randomized study where intermittent fasting was calorie matched, the adherence was about the same, and there was no significant difference between the two approaches, as far as weight loss or blood pressure or other health markers. But if you look at the details, the intermittent fasting group was at least pointing to being better at fat loss and minor improvements in insulin sensitivity. But even if that was statistically significant, 90% of the benefit is still just calories. So if you break your fast with the latte, doesn't really matter. Of course, you can optimize it a little bit by adding some protein and fiber, so it becomes a balanced meal without any blood sugar spikes. Special note about one meal a day. If you do that, it might be awesome for fat loss, but can also lead to mineral, vitamin and protein deficiencies. So if you do it for long term, be careful, okay? Second point, autophagy. Autophagy has also recently became the overused buzzword without too much data to support any claims. On one hand, autophagy is an extremely complicated topic. There are at least four types of autophagy identified today. Macroautophagy, microautophagy, chaperone-mediated autophagy, mitophagy. And they get triggered by multiple signals and work differently in the different organs. And there is no easy way to measure any of that. But on the other hand, it is very simple. There are a lot of people out there who never fasted or exercised in their life, and they're still alive and doing well. Which means that autophagy is doing its job pretty well in them. Otherwise, their cell would gunk up very quickly and they would die in many horrible ways. So autophagy is always going on. But if you want to boost your autophagy, yes, fasting is one of the ways to do it. Because on the internal level, one of the major triggers is acetyl ka pool. It's like an energy bank when the energy is used up and no food is coming in. Uh, by the way, it's not just sugar, glucose. Fatty acids and amino acids all add to that bank. But when it's running low, the autophagy is amplified. So another easy way to boost autophagy is to exercise. That takes a lot from the bank, and that can be one of the reasons why exercise is so beneficial for health and longevity. 
My common sense approach is to exercise in the fasted state. Will that in any clinically significant way add to mine or your life? As I say, more studies are needed. If we get any this year or in the future, I'll keep you updated. What we do know, and that's where we come to the circadian rhythms, and as I said before, my personal experience confirms it, that eating my breakfast is a good thing. Because you're more insulin sensitive in the morning and that cascades into feeling better, being energized and more productive. And so there are a lot of studies which associate eating breakfast with living longer. Not eating dinner is also a good thing. Your digestive system also wants to rest during the night, but it takes, what, six hours to process your last meal? So if you eat a big dinner, it does a night shift, not the best thing in the long term if you do it every single day. Here's what a week of me skipping quote-unquote breakfast, I'm eating several meals a day anyway, looks like. And here's a week of skipping dinners. Do you see the difference? Heart rate is better, HRV is better. Hm. But if you want to supercharge on top of that and have even more control of your weight and energy, Check this video next, where I look specifically at insulin, because it's one of the main hormones responsible for how your body works, and if you want to live to be 100 years old or more by design, you have to watch it. Living is smart, aging is bad. See you there.